This is one of those examples where judging a book by its cover can save you about 60 bucks. What to do, ladies and gentlemen? It's the Vulgar One, the Vulgar Son, the Vulgar Desperado, back at it in the booth with another quick review. And I'm gonna go over Forspoken, and this is gonna be a little bit different because what? Didn't even play the game. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how the hell are you gonna review something that you haven't played? Well, I went over a lot of reviews for this game, a lot of YouTube channels for people reviewing this game, and basically they proved my point at why I wasn't going to get or waste time even on the free demo of this game. And we're going to go over that. We're going to go over the simple fact of, you know, sometimes you can judge a book by its cover, know exactly what you're going to get, and be completely content with not having to go experiment and see for yourself if it's good. So I'm gonna go over some of these reviews and a little bit of some of these YouTubers as well and just kind of give you my general thought at why I knew it wasn't going to be good or at the very least why I thought I wouldn't like it and why other people are simultaneously not liking it as well. Alright, so first things first, let's give a general description of what the game and story is about. Rip straight from Wikipedia. The story follows the protagonist, Frey Holland, who is a young woman who was transported from New York City to the fantasy world of Athia. She uses magical powers to journey through it and survive in order to find her way home. Athia is under the tyrannical rule of the Tantas, which include Tanta Sala and Tanta Prave. Other characters include Frey's sentient bracelet, Cuff, very original there, an archivist, Jod Jody, and Auden. So also, if you didn't know too, this game is Square Enix second-ish attempt at a more westernized game uh, for the westernized market. Also comes from the developers Lumineers Productions, which, you know, I also worked on some pretty good games like Final Fantasy XV. Um, now, reading just the synopsis and just kind of looking at gameplay trailers and things like that, I mean, you can already get and understand that the vibe is very YA, you know, some people liken a lot of the dialogue and kind of motifs to a Marvel-esque style, but I liken it to a YA novel or even like old school Buffy, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, kind of like Josh Whedon type of writing, which again would be Marvel, but it, it's very YA to me is my point. I want to be clear just because it has that young adult young reader kind of vibe and feel doesn't necessarily make something bad I mean I think most fantasy slash sci-fi genres or stories are going to be borderline YA audience or at the very least like the audiences will cross and merge you can literally go to like a bookstore and see some books that will be in the sci-fi section cross over into the young adult section and same thing with young readers too i mean you know take your harry potters your percy jacksons things like that you know a lot of things can appeal to a wider audience and they don't have to be uh strictly for a certain type of people however why a does kind of take a new meaning in today's era and i'm going to go into that a little later in the video but first i want to also just talk about like some of the goods i guess of this game or some of the other things that people are talking about uh so one thing being is the gameplay um i don't really have much of opinion again obviously because i didn't play it and the simple reasoning is because you kind of get what you can see. It doesn't look bad. I mean, most reviews are coming out saying, hey, gameplay is pretty decent, you know, mid at worst. Um, some people are saying, you know, could have been utilized a little bit better. There could have been, um, you know, better flow to it or a consistency in the use of it. It doesn't really matter. I mean, the worst thing, you know, you're going to hear is that it's okay. And I mean, I think obviously looking at the trailers, you kind of can tell what you're getting from said gameplay. And it doesn't look too bad. So I don't really have any complaints there. Other people have complaints about the frame rate and the graphics. And, you know, as well as I'm not too snooty, I have seen some memes where it's all like, oh, this is a 2023 game compared to something in 2010. And, well, we all know how that shit goes in today's era. Now let's move over to the chief complaints that I'm seeing most people have for this game and 
why it's getting middling to negative or shitty reviews out there on the interwebs. Now first peep the screen, you'll see that over here when you just Google the game and reviews, it's getting an average of 3 out of 5, 6 out of 10 from IGN, 68 Metacritic, 69 Open Critic. I mean, these aren't really good. You go to like the news, most people say it's average, it's kind of bogus. I mean, it's not really good reviews, and I'll say, you know, average isn't the worst thing, but, you know, considering what people will say is good and what's going to get you sequels and more business for your company, average probably might not be the thing that's selling it here. And then you got YouTubers like Mr. Matty Plays and then a Melanie Mac go boom, like, they're also roasting it. I mean, there's tons of YouTubers out there roasting it, kind of talking about how shitty the game is. For, again, some of the other reasons that I mentioned. But the main one mentioned is the shitty-ass dialogue. Let's give you an example. So let me get this straight. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons. And, oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, kill jacked up beasts. I'll probably fly next. <laughs> Shut up! Oh my god, I don't care! Yo, I think this IGN review says it best. Some things are better left unsaid. This game is literally doing the one number one rule of writing that you don't do. You gotta show, not tell. And it seems like she's just literally narrating shit that she's just did in the exact moment. And that's just shitty writing. That's just bad dialogue. And again, is that young readers why a vibe you know like reiterating the shit you just read so the young reader you know potentially a preteen can understand and fully grasp what just happened in that moment now some might not find that level of writing bad or unbearable but you know then i'd ask you what time capsule you came out of because literally that's something that i think would only fly in 2005 and i would make the argument that even back then it wasn't like that i mean you've seen percy jackson you've seen harry potter when the fuck do either of those two characters have a moment where they're just like yeah i can shoot fireballs from my wand and i control water i'm awesome i'm the shit it's just kind of corny and slightly overbearing in a weird way. I think one of the fatal flaws when you write characters and write like that is you end up making a unlikable character. And that's another chief complaint that I'm seeing is people don't really care about Frey. I mean, they say she's okay and, you know, at best, you know, average at best, kind of like the game. But I think when you tout a character that's just... I don't know, I guess you could say reveling in their cockiness and their newfound abilities and without them eating a slice of humble pie, you're going to turn off your audience. You know, for example, in this scene, I just kind of watched it and I was like, this character's kind of a bitch when trying to speak to her partner Cuff here. Destruction and corruption are forms of creation in themselves. Wow, you sound like a serial killer. What? Destruction and corruption are beautiful forms of creation in themselves. I didn't sound like that. You absolutely sound like that. I know you absolutely sound like that. Yeah, see? So you can play that game. You're fucking stupid. Like, isn't it kind of odd that you would get so butthurt after he roasted her right back? I mean... Uh, don't get me wrong, I see what they're trying to do, you know, this whole back and forth kind of um, odd couple tag team, you know, partners in crime kind of deal, but the execution is poor, especially when it's corny and just not funny and she just kind of comes off more like a bitch. I mean, regardless of if he's trying to lecture her or inform her on something, she just kind of seems like a nonchalant, I don't care what you have to say, you sound like a weirdo, and I'm just going to roast you, and he's kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to roast you back, and then she's like, you're fucking stupid, and it's like, well, that's, that's very childlike, and honestly, 
very indicative of why a kind of young adult, sorry but girl power kind of humor and entertainment nowadays. These are the characters that you're seeing in a lot of your entertainment. There's probably not much different from the way this character acts from like your She-Hulks and your Velmas. Like, I can't sit there and say that there's, you know, all this rampant misandry and sexist jokes and all that jazz in this type of game, and hopefully not, but the character reminds me of those type of characters where they're just more pet peeved off by, you know, slight gripes than even realizing what a pain in the ass they are as an individual. Did I just do that? Well, definitely with my assistance. I did not just do that. We did. I just moved shit with my mind. Perhaps our connection has somehow awoken some abilities. I just moved shit with my mind. I just keep hearing I, I, I. I just moved shit with my freaking mind! <laughs> yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, talk to sentient cuffs, kill jacked up beasts. You know what? I'll probably fly next. No, you're just being ridiculous. Oh, that's too far. Good to know there's a line. If you could just master these new abilities, with my help, of course. Um, did you not just see me take out that gnarly beast? Oh, bring it, you mangled monster! Like most YA characters today, she just kind of comes off as unlikable and stuck up, a bit of a know-it-all. And look, maybe there are some character arcs and development in that where she grows and learns how to be less of a selfish bitch. But I don't believe that this character who's getting some godlike powers here is going to find and, you know, eat that nice slice of humble pie as the story progresses on. I mean, generally speaking, none of these characters do. She-Hulk didn't learn her lesson. She literally just said first episode she was better than fucking Hulk because she can control her anger all the time or whatever the fuck. So that is kind of the storytelling I'm expecting here. And I think with a lot of these reviews that are coming out, I mean, they're calling it, you know, even in the good reviews like here from menu playstation for spoken is average it has highs and lows of an overall regular gaming experience the nods to alice in wonderland the combat Frey holidays or holland story are pretty good but the game fails to deliver next gen visuals and a better storytelling experience there are so many fates to blacks and cutscenes that you feel bored and especially during the first hours of gameplay uh games.ch uh the parkour and combat system systems are worth developing further unfortunately developers fail to embed this groundbreaking groundbreaking approach into a convincing overall concept great moments are repeatedly thwarted by a lack of polished a dull game world and an incredibly sluggish sluggish story even when they're praising the game these are 72s overall you know not bad scores honestly they're still telling you that it's boring they're not liking the story I and mean, even one where they kind of like her story the character story they're saying the overall story is boring i mean what makes a story interesting and likable your characters the characters suck, it doesn't matter what the fuck's happening in the story, nobody's going to give a shit, and that's, I think, what you're getting here. Just, I mean, half the stuff that people are complaining about, arguably, at least, like, within the dialogue aspect, this was in the original trailers, the original releases, like, this is why I said, you can judge a book by its cover. I knew from the get-go that she was probably going to be this type of character, and I'm only just getting proven that by facts. I mean, let's go to another review. Worth Playing has it at a 69 overall, and it says, It might not seem like it right now, but Forspoken had some very good ideas, and it ended up still having some fun with it. It feels like it needed a little more time to figure out its real identity instead of its disjointed, little of this, little of that experience. I think its true form, which it hinted at, is a young adult, like I called it, Bayonetta-adjacent ass-kicker that needs to pick a tone and lean into that. If that's what it has, to, has uh, if that's what it had been, we'd be on to something. Game Rant has, at a 60 overall, so much of the design of Forspoken takes a starting template and duplicates it ad nauseum to the point that it, uh, to the point the biggest incentive to do anything is to flesh out the magic. By the time the credits rolled after 15 hours of story and a decent amount of side activities, there weren't any compelling reasons to keep going and cross items off the checklist. Instead, it felt better to appreciate things that were enjoyed about Forspoken and leave it at that. Okay, see, even, like, in these ones, like I said, these are good reviews for, you know, for the most part, right? I mean, not the best numbers, but they're not bad reviews. These are decent. They're telling you, hey, there's some good things in here, but nothing is compelling. And I think you can see that when you go to your main character. She is not compelling whatsoever. She doesn't have at least a hint of likability. I mean, a little easy on the eyes here, but she's in drab clothes, and she's just 
kind of narcissistic, you know, it's not something that you give a damn about. Unless you're, you know, a young person of today. These are the kind of stories and characters that they do like, you know. And to each their own. I'm not here to judge. I mean, again, didn't even play the game. Don't really care to. But I think the game in and of itself proves what kind of story you were going to get. Or I should, rather, I should say the trailers were proving what you were going to get with this game. And finally, to wrap this up, I just kind of want to talk about what you're going to see from people that are you know, liking the game and reviewing the game. The one thing that's just so annoying about, you know, having a difference of opinion is literally in this review that I picked up from a person out there, they do say that they liked it. They think it's better. They, you know, liken it to, you know, like Spider-Man on the sense of the dialogue, which kind of goes back to people's Marvel point and my YA point. But here at the, you know, last par or last sentence in the last paragraph, it says, like, unfortunately, I think it's due to race and gender of the main protagonist, like why people are complaining. And that to me, again, is going to be the annoying part about what you see with this game. I truly believe, as I said, you can judge certain things like by its cover. All right, this isn't a plate of food, even though in that sense you can. But if someone puts something in front of you that looks very, very unappealing, you're probably not going to touch it. And that's what trailers and book covers and all that shit is for. We can call it shallow, but again, it will save you 60 bucks. Nobody cares about the race of the girl. Nobody cares about the gender of the girl. There are plenty of different stories, video games, movies, comic books that have a uh, black female, like all that shit. They, they have all that stuff. It's, this is nothing new. However, what we're seeing, again, is more people making unlikable characters and trying to pass it off as racism or sexism. Now, I don't know what those people think it is to be a woman or a woman of color or a person of color and think that you need to be bitchy and that's just your arc because by nature of being a woman or a person of color, you're somehow a piece of shit and you can just be mean or obnoxious or narcissistic because that's not the fucking case here. But when somebody doesn't like something and the reasons are outside of race and gender, people love to point to bigotry as the reasoning behind it. And obviously, if I didn't show you in here, there's other reasons why people aren't liking this game. From the graphics to the story to the gameplay and especially the dialogue and the characters, it's not doing it for anybody. I mean, I'll be real, 60s, 70s. Overall, it's not a bad score. You can have fun with that. I think that's a you know a decent game. However, I think it's kind of ridiculous that these games and stories, whether it be a movie or whatever, they keep trying to pass off these unlikable lead characters and give you this corny 2005 dialogue and then try to say this is a masterpiece. I mean, there might be something here to work with, but the simple fact of the matter is it's not a good game. And you made an unlikable character with shitty, corny dialogue from a book probably designed for 13-year-olds, right? And then you tried to pass it off as this is a triple A game. And I don't know about all that, you know, to each their own. But I am curious about what other people thought in the comments. I didn't want to make this video as long as I did, but here we are. Hopefully you stuck with me this long. But let me know if you actually liked it, if you thought it was good. Again, even if you didn't play it, I, I'm not here to judge. It's not my opinion. And you might be a person that's like, oh, you need to play it. Da, da, da. Don't care. If you didn't play it, tell me why. If you did play it, tell me why. Let me know in the comments. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe. But you know what it is. Jabber Jaws, Vulgar One, Vulgar Son, Vulgar Desperado. And I'll catch you in the next video, y'all. Peace.